Robert Whitaker made one mistake tonight. One thing different than what Kevin Gastelum did and it cost him the fight. And the reason why it cost him the fight is because the one mistake that he made allowed Israel Adesanya to open up and use the biggest part of his game, his mind. What made Kevin Gastelum so successful against Israel Adesanya was the fact that he didn't give Israel time to think for a long, long time until he tired out. There were no soft resets. There, were no, there was no long times in between, in between exchanges for Israel to breathe, for Israel to think, for Israel to be able to mentally recognize patterns because he was always on, he was always being reactive. His brain, his brain was always thinking about moving and what's coming next or, oh, I gotta slip here, I gotta pull here. Oh, he's up in my face. Oh, I gotta frame, I gotta hit an angle. He, and that's about the one thing that Robert Whitaker didn't bring to the table today that Kevin Gasolin did. And what was needed to, to throw Israel off his game. If you notice, Robert Whitaker would come in and burst and then would immediately reset every single time. Immediate reset. He would come in, burst, burst hard with stance switch overhand rights like Jorge Masvidal did to Darren Till. Um, he, would he was coming in a lot with that, uh, with that um, front side kick to the knee that Yoel Romero hit him with and then Robert hit Yoel Romero back with. So he had a couple of the same entrances all night. And the issue and where Israel was able to, to figure him out is because of those soft resets. Because after every single time Robert Whitaker blitzed, Israel Asanya had enough time to think in between the next transition, he had a little bit of free time, a little bit of safe space to, to mentally break down Robert Whitaker's movements. And that's, that was it. I predicted it too. I'm upset, I'm upset to be honest, because I, I predicted this similar outcome, but the, the MMA math people were getting me. I thought that Robert Whitaker was gonna, was gonna come and put on the pace, and he's a, he's a little bit bigger, a little bit stronger, maybe even a little bit quicker than Kevin Gastelum. <laughs> the MMA math people got me. You would've seen a video from me two weeks ago. I, I made the video, I didn't post it. I didn't post it, because I didn't want you guys to call in here and call me stupid. And he went out there and did exactly that. You've seen, you've seen two videos, three videos of Israel Asanya, of me, of me breaking this down. When I, when I first watched and broke down Israel versus Kevin Gaslam's fight, I thought that, this would be, that it would be a terrible fight for Israel against Whitaker. And then I went back and rewatched the Yoel Romero contests. And I just, I saw, I saw flaws in Whitaker's game. I saw, I saw the way that he en enters in a straight line and that sets up pretty much Israel's perfect attacks, his straight punches. Once Robert was worrying about the straight punches, that's when he got caught with that rear hand up jab, the one that dropped him at the very end of the first round. That rear hand up jab, it's the same punch that ended up finishing off um, Derek Brunson. Uh, that came at a very weird angle on the soft reset too, and he had a good reset. Came in, got locked up, stance switch and the South Paul pulled out, boom. But Israel Adesanya didn't soft reset with them. I get people in this gym right here and I speak it all the time. If, if your opponent is soft resetting every time and you're allowing them to, they're gonna get in the habit of that soft reset. Now a soft reset is where you and I are about to, or me and you and I are fighting, right? And boom, 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 we hit each other and then all of a sudden my combination's over, we break apart and then we re-engage. So that's a soft reset. A hard reset is where I throw my combination, get my head off line and then come back in with something else. That's not allowing that reset. There's much less time, and that's that kind of off-tempo movements is what makes people like myself a six-foot-eight long jab, cheap, straight right hand kind of a striker like Israel Adesanya, a skinny guy just like me, a skinny long fighter just like me. That bucks us. Hard resets are the most difficult things for us to deal with because our footwork has to be on point every second of the way. And it can't just be backwards footwork. We have to be cutting angles. You, you, gotta, you gotta make us, you gotta literally make us run and hopefully we don't pull a Stipe Miocic versus Fabrice over Doom. If we're always on our back foot, our, our chance, you know, if you're not a Conor McGregor to, to land that, that one strike, it, it's extremely minimized. And that's what Kevin Gastelum brung versus Israel Asanya. Go, go watch. Go, after this, go look at my breakdown of Israel Asanya versus Kevin Gastelum. I speak about these things. I thought that Robert Whitaker was gonna take that same bully pressure style approach when going against Israel, but it was the soft resets that killed him. He would come in, burst, give a combination, 
and then immediately reset. He gave Israel way too much time to think. He, is, he was worried about the high kicks. He was worried about the straight punches of Israel. And then what happens? He gets hit with a weird ass angled cross the fucking body rear hand up jab and then gets cracked with a fucking rip gets cracked with a check hook after he threw an off balanced right hand israel's in a terrible spot look at the punch that israel threw in slow motion it right before he hit him with that check hook his body was in a terrible position but israel was able to take that and recover properly while using that check hook and around the button those are the kind of punches that, that you look at and just have no idea how they knock people out. Some people can just clobber you with their hand upside your head and your brain will shake enough that you, you go to sleep. Some people just hit really hard. But all you need is to turn that chin. Hit right here, opposite the fulcrum point, and crack the chin. That's all you need. That's why Conor McGregor, most of his knockouts come up against the cage. Why? Because when the opponents get their back up against the cage, they circle this way, Conor McGregor throws with it, bounces the chin off that opposite shoulder. It's a, it's a, it's to someone who doesn't have natural knockout power like myself, it's our favorite angle to punch from because it's, it's one of the only high priority angles to actually get a one punch knockdown or knockout with. Cause we, it's hard for us just to wing these, wing these big lumbering punches like a Deontay Wilder would or like somebody in the heavyweight division would. No, we have to be calculated. We can't throw like that. And it's really difficult for us to generate our momentum not swinging like wild fucking banshees. So, you get what I'm trying to say here. You understand. Robert Whitaker, if the rematch comes, I promise you constant pressure will be your best friend while mixing in takedowns as well. Uh, did Robert shoot a single takedown? I don't, I don't remember seeing one. Let me know if I'm wrong there. But I'm not wrong about what messed him up. Soft resets, don't do it. If you catch yourself doing it in sparring or in a fight, decide for once to fake soft reset and then dive back in. You'll really get your opponent's attention. Might knock him out. Well, this is Nick with Combat Sports World. And I'm about to jits up my dog.